Second class requirement number six, part C. Demonstrate first A for an object in the eye, the bite of a suspected rabbit animal, and for puncture wounds from a splinter, nail, or fish hook, for serious second degree burns, heat exhaustion, and shock, and for heat stroke, dehydration, hypothermia, and hyperventilation. Object in the eye? The first course of action is to have the victim blink several times to see if you can flush it out with tears. But if that doesn't work, you want to wash your hands and then very gently pull the upper eyelid over the lower lid so that the lashes from the lower lid can brush the object out. Now, he's got something caught beneath his lower eyelid. The best thing to do is gently put your hand beneath the eye with the thumb pull down and then use a sterile pad to clean out the eye. If none of these work, get medical attention. If someone is bitten by a warm-blooded animal, like a dog or a cat or a wild animal, then you have to be concerned about testing that animal for rabies. However, don't ever put yourself at risk trying to catch the animal. Call the police or the rangers or animal control and leave it to them. Now, when it comes time to treat the wound, you want to wash it thoroughly with warm water and soap to try to remove all the animal saliva. Then, wrap it with a sterile bandage and get him to a doctor immediately. A small puncture wound from a nail or a fish hook only makes a small hole, but don't be fooled. The real danger lies in the germs that can get in through that little hole. So you want to encourage the wound to bleed, to flush out anything that was forced inside. Now, to remove a splinter or a piece of glass, you want to use tweezers that have been sterilized over an open flame or in boiling water. If you ever get snagged by a fish hook, you need to take special care because of the barb at the end of the hook. Your first step is to cut the fishing line. Then, if you don't have access to a doctor to take the fishing hook out, you're going to have to take it out yourself. But you don't want to just pull on the hook, because the barb can tear flesh as it comes out. What you want to do is push the hook farther through, so the barb pokes through the end of the skin. Then, using pliers or wire snippers, clip the end of the barb. Then, you can pull the barbless shank of the hook out through the entry hole. Then just dress and treat the wound as a normal puncture wound. This is a second degree burn. Not as bad as a third degree, but worse than a first. With first degree burns, the skin turns red. With second degree burns, you see blisters. And on the third degree burns, the flesh is charred. Be careful not to break the blisters on a second degree burn. And don't use creams or ointments. Just run it under cold water or use a cold wet compress until the pain goes away. This is heat exhaustion. The body's cooling system's out of whack. So, get the victim out of the sun. Have him lie down and raise his feet. Remove any excess clothing, and then, if he's still alert, offer him water with just a pinch of salt to replace the salts he sweated out. When someone's injured in an accident, stress can keep the circulatory system from pumping blood to all parts of the body. That's shock, and that can be very dangerous. There are several symptoms to look out for. The first step in treating shock is to relieve the cause of the shock. So, Control any bleeding, treat the wounds, and make sure their airways are open. Then, have the victim lie down and raise his feet so that blood flows to the vital organs. Then, keep him warm and keep him calm by staying calm yourself. Call or send for help as quickly as possible, but never leave a victim of shock alone. Heat stroke is like heat exhaustion squared. The skin is red and hot, the breathing's noisy, and the pulse is rapid. Your victim may be confused, irritable, even unconscious. The key is to get them in the shade quickly and cool them down any way possible. Use wet towels or fans, or find a body of water like a creek and get them wet. Then keep a close eye on the victim and get help quickly. Dehydration is when you've sweated out or lost more water than you've taken in, and it can happen in cold or hot weather. You're gonna feel tired, achy, maybe confused. The cure for dehydration is hydration. Drink enough water before it occurs. Hypothermia is when your body's too cold for too long. You feel numb, tired, you shiver. You may even pass out, but if you wait too long, it can be fatal. When you're treating someone with hypothermia, the key is to warm them up any way you can. Get them inside, zip them in a sleeping bag, give them something warm to drink, whatever it takes. Then, get help. Finally, time to catch our breath. <sighs> but that can be a problem if you're suffering from hyperventilation. 
Hyperventilation is when you get so scared or anxious that you begin to breathe too quickly and deeply. That forces carbon dioxide out of your bloodstream. It makes you feel like you're suffocating. Now, the key with the victim of hyperventilation is to get them to calm down. Have them breathe into a brown paper bag. That helps reintroduce carbon dioxide into their system. Now, hyperventilation is not usually very serious, but it can be a symptom of asthma, diabetes, and heart problems. So you might want to have a doctor check it out. A lot of important first aid treatments you need to know. So review them, and then re-review them in detail in your Boy Scout Handbook. And when you know you're ready, demonstrate them for your scout leader.